It is no secret that the Robo Brew has been very popular here in the United States. It's also not a secret that the early versions of the version 2 had some issues. The version 3 just recently hit the United States. In this video, we're going to take a look at what improvements they've made, how it's affected it, coming up next. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see product reviews just like this one and all sorts of other home brewing related stuff, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss a video when it comes out. Full disclosure on this, I do want to let you know that I did not purchase this. The folks at Keg Land were gracious enough to actually send a unit over to the United States with the shipment to give to me for a review. I also want to thank More Beer for actually shipping the unit to me when they received it. So just full disclosure, I want to let you guys know that I did not purchase it. For those of you that are not 100% familiar with the Robo Brew, I'll go through real quickly what it is. It is a single vessel brewing system, much like brewing a bag. And it has a nine gallon capacity. Uh, it has a malt pipe that goes down inside of the vessel. And that holds your grains. There's a false bottom that is part of that. In the US here, there is uh, two different elements for a total of 1500 watts. There's a 1000 watt element and then there's a 500 watt element. There's also a pump built into the base of it and that has a recirculation tube that comes back up over the top and allows you to recirculate while you're mashing. That is the basic gist of the Robo Brew. First I wanted to talk about packaging as far as an improvement goes with the Robo Brew. The previous version came with very little packaging at all it rattled around in there. I saw a lot of photos online of people getting dented units, damaged units. Some of them were so badly damaged that they even had, they had to even go back. Now, the newest version, the version 2, the second shipment to the United States, is shipped the same way as the V3 is. And they send it with some styrofoam that's actually wrapped around the unit. And then there's also two different pieces of styrofoam that are on the top and one that's on the bottom. And I am pleased to say that when I got this version of the Robo Brew, it had no damage at all. Okay, the second part of the upgrades that I find with this unit is that the mash screen at the bottom is actually a two-part unit now. And it has a fine screen as well as the coarse screen that was in the bottom previously. And what that is going to do, according to the manufacturer, and I believe it to be true as well, is it's going to keep the bottom screen from getting clogged as much by uncrushed grain. Uh, the, the size of the holes in the bottom were small enough or large enough that the grain could get stuck in there and cause some issues with your mash recirculation. I saw a lot of people that had stuck sparges and whatnot. This new screen on the bottom looks to improve that drastically. There is a little bit of assembly whenever you get the unit out of the box. Um, you do have to put the spigot on the front of it and you also have to put the handles on the actual lid itself. Other than that, there's not a lot of assembly required at all. The only other thing you need to do is put the silicone O-ring around the top of the uh, mash screen. And some people are not even using that because ever since the first unit, the two successions after that, the, v, the, the second V2 shipment into the United States as well as the V3, the silicone ring is just a little bit too thick and does not fit down in the malt pipe. It, it's the same issue with the V3. I tested it already. It doesn't fit quite snugly down in there, but you know, Key says that you don't even need it. And I, I tend to agree with that. I mean, it's just made for keeping the grain from channeling into, you know, being channeled all the way down the bottom and probably wouldn't have an issue with that either. But I would recommend you don't really even have to use it. The other improvement to it is the dog bone piece or whatever you want to call it. That's what I called it in the first video. And that is uh, the lifting arm. And they put a little a ridge in that so that you can hook it up to a winch and be able to pull it up out of there, pull it up out of the unit itself and not have the rope slide around and have the thing tilt around. So that's a nice improvement. I know the question on everyone's mind is what about the gallon markings on the inside? Well, I'm pleased to tell you that I measured the water by weight, filled it all the way up to eight gallons, and the markings are accurate. So kudos to them for getting that straightened out. That was one of the big issues that I had with the first unit that I got. And uh, subsequently I did a um, sight glass modification on the one that I had, and I'll leave a card up here so you can see that. This, this unit would be 
able to be modified in the same fashion as that without any problem. The other improvement that they made that was also a modification that I did to the first unit is they put a cam lock on this bar arm, which makes it so much easier and so much more reliable. I had a tendency of tightening it down too much and crushing the little silicone o-ring in there. So kudos to them for listening to the community and really stepping it up and, and including that automatically out of the gate with this. So that, that's a wonderful feature as well. The other thing that they improved on was the malt pipe. And this is true for the second shipment of the V2s to the United States as well as the V3. They thickened up the malt pipe. It was a lot thinner on the first shipment that came to the United States. And I'll show you a little bit of video there of the differences between the two. But this is a much more solid unit now. Um, it's not as sharp. The first one was a little bit sharp and some people had reported getting cut with it. So that's that's a great improvement as well one of the other things that they included with the new design <clears throat> is a ring for the bottom screen now i really never i didn't find a need for any anything uh, of that sort on the first version that i had i just you know tip just push on one side of the screen after it's drained and it, it flips right up so the only issue with this if you do use it i have noticed that it will touch the bottom of the, the malt pipe screen and you might have to squish this down a little bit. So, you know, it's one of those things where I don't know if I would even use it, but it is there if somebody, you know, should want to use it. The other thing that they did improve on is the way that the top collar sits on the top of the, the, the uh, drain pipe for the, the malt pipe. And the old, the first shipment had a really hard time with this actually going on. The, the machining was a little bit tight and I had a really hard time with the first one getting that on. And uh, the new one I'm, I'm pleased to report is very easy to get on. It, it comes right on, you know, comes off and goes right on. Um, they did redesign the bottom of the, the second pipe that goes in there. There was a little bit of a different design on the first shipment of the V2s that came. They, they included a new design on the, on the V3 with that. One of the other nice additions that they included with the upgrade is they included a piece of hose that will attach to the sparge arm so that you don't have to purchase one of those. The previous or first shipment came without any hose in it. And so people were having to buy some hose in order to get the mash water or the recirculation to go down into the malt pipe. So it's nice that they included a little piece of silicone hose for you on that. And then probably one of the biggest improvements that they've made is the controller. Now the new controller has some of the same characteristics as the old controller did, but there's a few key features that are new on the V3 that I think are really important. One of those is the, able, the ability to calibrate the sensor. Now, a lot of people reported an issue of having a different temperature from the bottom to the top of the mash. I have not had too many issues with that. It was usually a degree or two off. And I think some of that has to do with how the, you know, the, the grain crush as well as how you operate the device. The other thing that it does have is it also has the uh, pre-start timer so you can start it uh, ahead of time before your brew day so that you can actually have your water ready before you start brewing. And then it also has the step mash feature which can be used for, there's six steps and you can use it for step mashing, you could use it for hop additions, there's a lot of different things you could do with it. And I did watch the video that Kegland put out on how to program it, and I'll be going over that, my own version of that as well. I'm going to be brewing uh, on this unit here in the very near future, and I'll be doing a step mash and showing you how all that works and testing it and see how quickly it ramps up between the different temperatures, and we'll be covering that stuff coming up. All in all, I think they really did a great job, and, and the, the nice thing about it is they really listened to the community, I think, and, and did a lot of things that that we had asked them for. Um, I personally had a few conversations with Key and discussed some of the issues that I was seeing on the RoboBrew forums on Facebook, uh, RoboBrew Users Group USA, and then also the uh, the Australian or the, the European version. And they really addressed a lot of those concerns. One of the other things that I did notice on this unit over the, the first shipment that came from the company is the collar on the bottom is a little bit taller now and it has a rolled ring around the bottom, which gives a little bit more structural integrity. The first one had not quite as much of a lip around the bottom, a little bit more flimsy. And I think that this additional height on the collar provides a little bit more room in there for some airflow because a few people had some issues with the pumps and also with the, uh, the controller having some issues. So hopefully that additional height will help that issue. Should give you a little bit better, hopefully a little bit more longevity. All in all, I think the version three, they've, they've done a really great job with addressing those concerns. 
And uh, oh, lastly, I didn't mention this, but it does come with a um, immersion chiller. And uh, some people have talked about you know, this not being the greatest performance at all. I do want to try and use it myself again. I've, I used it on the original version and didn't have a lot of success. I mean, it took a while to chill down. I do want to try one of their method, methods that they recommend, and that is running the pump and running the wart through this chiller submerged in a bucket of ice water. So I'll try that out and see how that works and report back to you guys on that as well. So that is my wrap up of the initial thoughts on the V3. I think that it came out really nice. I think that uh, you know the improvements were, were much needed and I look forward to brewing on this thing and letting you guys know what I think and what I find out about it. And uh, you know, appreciate all the support. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. T-shirts is always for sale in our store. I'll leave a link down below on that. This unit is currently out of stock at More Beer the last time I checked. And, you know, hopefully there'll be another shipment coming soon. I haven't heard anything more about that. So hopefully there'll be some more coming because they're being grabbed up really quickly. So, again, I appreciate it. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We will see you on the next video.